All right, guys, how we doing? Let's just get this camera sorted. Um, had a problem with this light earlier, it wasn't plugged in. But it is now, and we are here. Um, wow, that audio quality, uh, video, it's not the video quality, it is the, um, this picture. <laughs> it's, uh, it was probably taken at like, you know, when I was 12 tabling, so it's really, really small, the screenshot, and um, yeah. But anyway, we should be able to do this. Let's see who's here on Twitch. Uh, one testy call, um, great name. Congratulations, uh, is here, says afternoon. Fuzzy Ferret's here, and uh, Ian Simpson Poker as well. Uh, Roberto on YouTube is here, Darius on Twitch, and uh, who else? Uh, sorry, on YouTube, and Mr. Jam's here, Matt Burns is here, awesome. Right, so today, what we're going to do is a little bit of ICM, but really focusing on what do we do against players who we maybe don't play like the solvers, which is uh, what some of the feedback that I get when we go, okay, let's just play like a solver and see what happens. But the thing is that if your opponents don't play like the solver, it doesn't really matter what, you know, you don't want to be looking at what the solver does in response. So that is really the, the main point of today's session. Um, can I get rid of that? Should be able to. You should be able to see that sim. This is the, not the first sim we're going to look at, but let's go back here. So this is our first spot, guys. Let's get straight into it. Funny Money's here as well. Says good morning. Good, uh, good to see you. Um, let's get straight into it. So this is the first spot. We're on the bubble here, and I know you can't really see it, so I'm just going to tell you. We are 40 players left, 35 paid. We're currently in 33rd with 15 bigs. And under the gun goes for a min raise of about 34 big blinds. And we have uh, Jack-10 suited in the small blind. So what do you guys think straight away? Do you think this is a call, a jam, or uh, or something else? Mr. P-Man says Steamers, a stream has stopped. I don't think so. I don't think so. Has anyone else struggling with their stream? with this stream I guess if uh, if the stream stopped for you you won't won't see it um, so Ian Simpson says use all my time bank and then fold interesting interesting stream fine okay cool let's keep going through then fuzzy says it's good as well so does Matt Burns awesome so uh, let's have a look here road to 500 kg says fold Mr. Jam, I think our hand is too good to fold. We have very high risk premium versus under the gun, but I do like a call. All right. So we've got votes for fold. We've got tank fold. We've got call. We've got fold. Uh, Funny Money says fold. Maybe hard to realize equity. Yeah, so I think this is, I think this is good. Like it's going to be hard. Out of position to call. The pot's going to be what, like six bigs. Maybe the big blind comes in as well. We've got an SPR of just over two. What are we really hoping for? So I'm not sure about that. Electric foot says call and pray. There's no raise from big blind. Uh, what else? Uh, Fuzzy Ferret says, uh, Ian Simpson, you don't have a fold button. Uh, I think uh, I agree with that. Um, can we call here? That's where I lean. Yeah, so let's have a look at the original sim. Now, like I said, the focus of today is not to worry too much about the equilibrium, but it's to, it's to see like how do you edit the strategies and what kind of effect does that have? That's really what we're what we're looking at. So uh, top top kicker says snap fold. Roberto uh, says fold. Not enough big blinds. Okay, so I think some of you are going to be in for a little treat here. Let's um, what are we going to do? Let's load. Let's let's do a quick quick load and Jack ten suited. So this is EP's opening range. You should be able to see that. Should be fine. And then let's have a look at what the small blind is supposed to do. So the first thing is zero, zero hands want to call. You can see here, zero, zero hands want to call. What we want to do is have a jam or fold strategy. And you can see Jack-10 suited is uh, is a profitable jam. Now, you can look at the numbers there and you can think, wow, 18 cents. That's not a lot of money. But imagine doing this a million times. You've just made 180 grand doing this. Of course, this relies on your opponent responding in the in the same uh, in the in the right way. So let's just get into that because that's why we're here today. We 
uh, yeah, so someone was talking about the risk premium being really high. Um, let's have a look at that. So small blind versus on the gun, ten point seven percent. So imagine being able to re realize you need an next you need to be able to realize an extra ten point seven percent here if you call, and that's just not going to work. Right, you're just going to really really struggle to do that. So that's why there's no calling. These risk premiums are fairly high. I mean, it is the bubble, right? It's five away from the money. Thirty five paid, forty left. And uh, so that's why we want to be jam or fob. But let's have a look at under, gun, under the gun versus us. 3.6%. So not, not huge, but, you know, not insignificant, I would say. So they still need to, like, if we jam on them, they still need to find an extra 3.6% against our range. Or hands that have an extra 3.6%. Hopefully that makes sense. So when we jam, this is what under the gun supposed to do. Right, and this again, this is why we're here today to, 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 to focus on this. When we, temp, when we jam a hand like Jack 10 suited or Queen 10 suited, you can see all the broadways we're jamming before. We're getting lots of better hands to fold. So when we jam Jack 10, you can get a hand like Ace Jack off or King Queen or King Jack or King Queen uh, suited or Ace 10 suited, all the Ace X hands along here. You can even start to get sevens to fold and sixes and fives really should fold, um, which is why if we go back to our strategy, why we jam fives and not sixes. Hopefully that makes sense because where if we jam sixes, we can get sevens to fold, but it's not it's not great. But if we jam, what was it? If we jam fives, then we're getting sixes to fold pure, and that's uh, pretty important and pretty good. But let's have a look at this range. Let's say you're up against a player. You know, some of you maybe thought, okay, yeah, fifteen big blinds. I think the guy's going to raise raise call with with more hands. Right? He's going to raise call ace jack off. He's going to raise call ace ten suited. He's going to raise call sevens and sixes and fives and king queen suited. Let's um, let's set that up. I'll show you how to do that. And then I want, to, want you to tell me before the sim finishes how you think that's going to affect our strategy. So this is equilibrium. This is relying on somebody folding all of these hands and calling with the hands in green. So folding the hands in white and calling the hands in, in green. Let's, uh, let's do this. So I'm going to load hand. We need the full save for this. So where is it? This one. It's going to take a little bit of time to, to load in the background. Once it does, we can then compare. Uh, in fact, I'm going to have to stop this one now. 10 8 suited, I'm running in the background. Um, what we're going to do is we see under the gun open and we are going to jam. And then we want to edit this uh, this calling range. So what I've done there is just go through the the branch. You know, the, this is the, the node we're going to lock, right? We're going to say under the gun is a bit of a donk and that's the kind word to use. And they're going to call too many hands. They're going to call these hands as well. Okay, so we've added just a just a few hands in here. Uh, professional in profession profession in simp says I think fold for lower bluff equity. Not sure what that means actually. Um, maybe you can tell us a bit more. And um, so yeah, let's say that they they do this instead. So what we can do now is actually compare the two strategies. All right. And you can see that they uh, are in green, you know, the hands that we think they might call in this situation. So they're now going to go a little bit wider. They're going to call with more pairs, ace jack off, ace ten suited, and king queen suited. What kind of effect? So we're going to set this up in a minute, but what kind of effect? Let me know in the chat. Is that going to have on our jamming range? This was the original. This is what we could jam before. Sort of sevens plus all the suited broadways, ace jack off, ace nine suited, some wheel aces, and some lower pairs as well. What, do you think we're going to be able to shove tighter or wider? What kind of effect do you think this is going to have? You guys let me know in the chat and then we'll have a look. Okay, so, so uh, Ian says tighter. Uh, professional simp says if they start calling hands like lower pockets and ace jack off we can't get them to fold better hands than jack 10 suited so we need to go tighter hence folding the jack 10 suited i think yep okay uh, i think that's probably going to be the reasonable adjustment so just a really quick important point here when we want to know what we should do from this node right what which hands should we jam what we do when we click this button up here run nash calculation we can actually choose this selected subtree and what this is going to do is work out from this point, you know, calling and jamming, not just jamming, but it's going to go for calling as well. Thanks, uh, Jorge, 
Georges Espo. Not sure how you say that. Um, and so it's going to work out the EV of uh, of both lines and then tell us what we need to do. So you can just do selected subtree. You don't have to run the whole thing again, which is which is awesome. We're going to keep this uh, under the gun range fixed. But what we've done is we've changed and edited this uh, the calling range. We think they're going to go a little bit wider than perhaps they should. Now, anytime you make a change like this, where you where you can see this padlock, you are you're going to have to click re reset regret. Okay. And then you're going to click OK, and that should then tell us what we need to do from uh, from the small blind. So I'm going to go. I'm going to run this in the background, and I'm going to go back here. So, I uh, so one of the comments was that we can't get better hands to fold, right? Well, we're still getting better hands to fold, right? Yes, they're calling Ace Jack and Ace Ten, but they're still folding King High and they're Queen High, which is better than Jack High, and they're still folding these Ace X hands down here. So. It's not strictly true. The, the the answer might be that we have to fold, right? Because we've got less fold equity and a lot of our EV in this situation is going to come from fold equity. And then a hand like Jack-10 suited is going to have enough equity when called by this range. Okay. So this is uh, not going to take too long. Mrs. M Diamond, thanks for the follow. So you can see, yeah, this really doesn't take too long. I've done it to a CI of five, you probably could do it to lower. It depends uh, how many abstractions you use. If you use a lot, then run it for deeper. If you didn't use too many abstractions when you set this up, well, that's a weird noise. Um, what is that? What's that? What? Hello, Ian Lieben mention. Um, he, hello, he, no, Ian, you love people. Is that right? How good is my German? Um, so I can't remember what I was saying now. Oh yeah, yeah. So if you haven't run to very high abstraction, there's no point you running to a CI of five because you, um, because you don't have the the the. I don't even know what the word right word is, but basically there's just no point. Um, okay, so let's have a look here. Mr. Jam, so jamming Jack 10 City there only works versus nits and good regs. And as Profession in Simp says, answer is not yet out. Yeah, we don't know the answer yet. We don't know the answer. Nits may be having tighter food for thought. Yeah. So let's just talk about that really quickly before we see the result. It's not, it's going to work against regs. It should do. Good regs, uh, not bad regs. Uh, but nits are not going to open 19% from under the gun, are they? They're going to start with a tighter range. And if their range is tighter to begin with, then the range of hands that we get to jam is going to be tighter as well. So everything sort of gets tighter. Let's, um, this is, so we're going to look in here. And uh, is this right? Yes, this is right. Okay, so this is our response. So this is what we said under the gun was going to call and fold. And then this is what we can suddenly do. Now, what is, I think is quite interesting here is that we actually do have some calls here. I, I found this uh, you know, fascinating because the it clearly thought that jamming was going to be higher EV than calling, and that's why if it was, you know, and it wanted to do that all the time. So I think that, was, that is a really, really important point here. But this range has changed a lot. So this is what it was originally. I'll try and move my mouse out of the way. So we can shove 10.8% of hands, and now about half that, 5.6%. We can only shove eighth plus ace queen in this spot. And we can actually do some flatting with sevens, king queen suited, king jack suited, ace jack suited, and ace 10 suited. So everyone was right, you know, if we tighten up, sorry, if we loosen their range, our range gets tighter. But it's you've got to make sure that you're doing it in the right kind of way, you know, in terms of, you know, pairs, pairs and strong hands. So we can now, you know, we're comfortably shoving ace queen because our opponents are calling ace jack, ace 10 suited, king queen suited. We're comfortably shoving eights plus because they're calling seven sixes fives plus some hands we're flipping against. Um, but we can't suddenly jam king queen suited. That's going to lose us lose us money, and um, yeah, these other hands uh, as well. Uh, jamming ace jack suited is still profitable, but calling is going to make more money. Mrs M Diamond, first time chat says hi, Gareth. Long time fan of your content on YouTube and poker on the mind. First time catching you on Twitch. Awesome. Welcome to the stream. I think you did just hit the follow button, didn't you? Yeah, so that's awesome. Um, I know there's, I'm recognizing a few names today. People I've chatted to on Facebook recently, uh, Instagram, stuff like that. So yeah, shout out to you guys for, for being here. We're here. I say we, 
because it's all of us. We're here every Monday at four o'clock UK time. And today we're trying something a little bit different. We're looking at node locking and, and seeing what kind of effect it has on uh, in different spots. So yeah, this is uh, this is this is where we're at. We were looking at this hand. I recognize it's a bit blurry. I've you know blown up the the image so that you can uh, so that you can, guys can see it a bit better. Um, when I took a picture of it, it was like you know super super small. Uh, Scanivia, thanks for the follow. Electric for I'm just spewing nonsense around poker streams. All right, well, uh, appreciate your honesty. Funny money was in a similar spot last night, jammed and got called off by A7 suited. Yeah, so if your opponents are, are not gonna you know play ball here, then we can't shove the suit broadways. Basically, is what we're saying. We're gonna look at some some more hands, um, but let's just have a quick. A gander again at these two different ranges. So we just go. I mean, we're suddenly only we only get to shove 5.6% versus 10.8. So it's almost almost half. All right, let's um, let's end that one there. Let's uh, let's see if we can do another one. I don't want to save that. Thank you. But hopefully, yeah, you guys don't understand now. When you use HRC, you can edit, you can node lock the range, and it's going to have an effect. This is how you're going to come up with exploitative strategies that you might want to use in game. So well, I gave an example there of what it looks like at equilibrium, which might be optimistic, but this is what's supposed to be at equilibrium. And then what happens, like a sort of pessimistic approach that this guy just doesn't know what he's doing. He's going to call with too many hands. We probably, suddenly, you could see, we're just shoving for value. There are no three-bet bluffs, three-bet jam bluffs, so, you know, blocking calls, unblocking folds, good equity when called, getting better hands to fold, you know, that kind of sort of logic. Right, let's see what else I've got in this, uh, in here. Um, oh yeah, this this might be a, a reasonable one to look at. Um, can you guys see that? Yeah, it's a bit small. So it looks like the same tournament, same situation, maybe the very next hand. So I didn't shove Jack-10 suited, but I think if I was confident this guy knew what he was doing, I should have done, right? But I think it's a fine adjustment to just let it go as well. If you feel that like they're just going to call off too wide, and I have seen it, players calling off ace-jack off in these spots, raise calling ace-jack off, and ace-10 suited, and king-queen suited even, and pocket sixes, like, it's really, really bad. But, um, you know, you want to you want to know what the adjustment is. This is what it looks like at equilibrium, and this is what it looks like if we adjust, you know, and we go a little bit wider for the call-up. So next spot then, uh, what do we think here, guys? What do you think is the equilibrium? Forget exploits for a minute. What do we think is the equilibrium solution here? Is it to fold, min raise, or jam? Those are the three options I'm going to give you. Uh, Top Top Kicker says, what would the big blinds call range be here? Ace, eight, off, plus. Well, we're going to get into that in a moment, but I think um, that's a reasonable start. Okay, we've got Jam, Jam. Uh, Ian says, I think it's our worst combo. Minty says, Min Rays. Uh, Mrs. M Diamond says, yes, I would also say Jam. Sorry, how deep are we? 14.4 uh, big. Says it. Is that? Right, let me know if that's not, you can't, guys can't see that. I guess if you're watching on like a really small, like on your phone or something, then yeah, I can I can see how that, you wouldn't be able to see the stack size. But we've got 14.4 bigs. Small blind's got 25. Big blind's got 36.7. Oh, how deep are we? Okay, yeah, it's exactly the same as the last one. Still 40 left. It's the very next hand. So still 40 left, 35 paid. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, so I can see that top, top left, you can see places paid 35. Uh, and my rank 34 out of 40 because I didn't shove the Jack 10 suit in the last uh, the last hand. Uh, who was that? Z Z Zolran Z Zolran Z Z Zolran. Who knows? Uh, thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Uh, Total Kicker says, "Oh, I'm asking about this one, 10 8 suited." Yeah. Okay. So we're going to get into it um, in terms of what the big blind calls. But I said that's going to be a pretty good start. Jam probably prints hard. Uh, sorry, Jab probably prints hard to do in game though. Okay. Uh, Roberto says raise two and a half X. Yeah, so I would go min raise. I uh, wouldn't go. I mean, you could adjust the, the, the raise sizes, but then you'd have to go tighter. And I think the the way to win in, in poker is to play as many hands as possible profitably. 
So if you raise to 2.5, it means that you're uh, playing too few hands, right? You're having to fold some hands, and that's not what we want to uh, what we want to do. Man of Luck says limp jam. I mean, all right, fair enough. Is there an argument for limp calling? So guys, do your best. I know it's hard, especially on a Monday afternoon. Maybe you've uh, you've you've just had work. <laughs> You're coming to the end of work. You've had a hard weekend as well. Try your best, if you can, to listen to what the options were. Limping could definitely be a thing, all right? And I appreciate the questions, but fold, min raise, and jam. Let's keep it simple to begin with. As soon as we start adding another node to the game tree, it gets more complicated and it becomes more challenging to implement in-game. Okay, cool. All right, so lots of different ideas. Let's take a look at the solution. Uh, is this, uh, this is actually this one. So we might need to um, just give this a quick save. So let's have a look. Uh, one tester calls says, how are we measuring the tight, loose calling off ranges of players? If they're a tight player, they open less, but likely fold to jam more. Loose players open more, but probably call off wider. Is it not kind of evening out? Well, you see, the thing is, we haven't e we're not even there yet. We're not even talking about exploits yet. We're just focusing on equilibrium. Because there's no point going straight to exploit if you don't know what equilibrium looks like. This is why when players say, oh, I just ignore GTO, like uh, it doesn't doesn't affect me, like no one's playing like that in my games. I say to them, how do you know where they're making mistakes unless you know what the equilibrium looks like? And you might say, oh yeah, well, they're just folding too much. Well, how do you know that? if you don't know what the solution looks like, the equilibrium solution looks like. Uh, Smoke Summer for me says, do you have a Discord? I can post HRC questions. Not for people outside of my programs, but I do have a free Facebook group. We've got about 4,500 members in there. So yes, uh, if I'm gonna, in fact, I'm gonna type this in here, Facebook group, give you the details. So who's that for? Smoke Summon for me. There you go. That's the details of my free Facebook group. I'm gonna post that on YouTube as well, just in case you're not in there already, but I'm sure many of you are. Um, nice, cool bubs. I like fold or jam that close to the money. Just feels like you're allowing Big Blind to rejam all offsuit ASICs that could just fold out pre. Uh, sorry, don't do Facebook, but thank you. That's okay, no worries. Um, let's have a look. One, let's just have a I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a little rant. <laughs> I have a little rant. It's it's one of the things that I just do not understand in poker, and it's not your fault, nice call, bub zero zero. It's just what you've been taught, right, and what you've learned is that rejam is what happens when someone raises and then someone jams over the top, right? And I don't know why it's done that and why it's called that. Um, shout to smoke someone for me for the follow. Appreciate that. That's not a rejam, okay? Everyone calls it a rejam, but it's not a rejam. So a rejam is when I shove 10 bigs on, in the, on the button and then the small blind who has more bigs than me also jams. In order to re something, something else has to happen first. That's my rant over. It's not called a rejam, it's called a three bet jam. Like, I just don't know how you can, I mean, so many people do it. And uh, it, honestly, it um, winds me up a little bit. No, but it's fine. Like, I know it's not your fault, right? It's. Uh, like, it's just, it's what everyone uses, like, like really, like, well-known professionals, especially those with English as a second language, call it rejam, and it's just not a rejam. Anyway, whew, let's go. Uh, let's, so, uh, 880 Bobo says, Queen A suited is a shove, according to DTO. Oh, right, I'm not sure DTO has this exact bubble spot, so I wouldn't, go straight to DTO. Chippy V could be fine to shove, but we're talking about ICM on the bubble here with 34 or 40 with 35 paid, okay? Uh, SX Mon, do you use scripts to get these solutions? No, I just set them up and run them. Let's have a look. Um... <laughs> Matt Burns says, Gareth's next book, The Poker Dictionary. Yeah, um, maybe, the, yeah, The Poker. <laughs> We need something, we need something. Let's have a look. Um, okay, cool. So 
Yeah, turn. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so Queen Eight suited. Yeah, it might be a jam for chips, but uh, this is a bubble, right? And I'm not. I I want to say that there are no bubble spots on DTO preflop. Can you show your post flop settings very quick so I can see? Um, that's a secret, I'm afraid. It's a, it's a huge secret. Um, you let me know what se settings you use, and I'll tell you whether they're any good. Um, but if you want an idea, they're not secret really. But go and watch my HRC video on YouTube. Uh, I've include all my settings uh, in there. Right, so we have a polarized opening range. And so this is going to be interesting. 10-8 suited, uh, what do we have? Yeah, 10-8 suited on the button is just a min raise and we're just going to min raise fold. And um, we're basically going to call like 10s plus, probably ace 10 suited plus against good players and then fold all the other hands in pink that raise in here, like king 10 off, queen jack off, jack 10 off, ace four off, king five suited, queen nine suited. All of these hands are just going to go for a um, uh, raise fold. Uh, guys, just let me know when the... When the thing comes down here, it says someone's followed. Shout out to Alan de Landazuri. Um, all I can hear is it sounds really dreadful. Does it sound dreadful for you? Because I've turned the sound down, but I feel like something's up with the sound today. So if you guys can let me know, that would be that would be grand. Um, yeah, I think. And so then we have all the hands in pink that either raise call or raise fold. No sound here. Oh, interesting. You don't even get the sound. Well, all right, fair enough. And all the hands in purple, I mean, is that what we're calling this color? The, the color that's not salmon is uh, it's just a jam. This is so weird. It sounds, honestly, my side, it sounds absolutely dreadful. Shout out to uh, Tachanium for the follow. Um, okay, cool. All right, I don't know what, I've turned the sound off for me now, so I might miss some of the follows. I apologize if I do that. Um, let's have a look. Funny Money says Lavender. Mrs. M. Diamond says Lilac. Okay, well, we'll go with those colours. Lavilac or something like that. Uh, so, in the chat, tell me, what's the difference between a polarised range and a condensed range? Okay, thanks for the uh, telling me the sounds, okay. No sound on the follow alert here. Cool. Um, yeah, what's the difference between a condensed range and a polarized range? Who's going to be brave enough? Brave enough to tell us what the difference is. Even if you get it wrong, that's uh, it's absolutely fine. Because at least you're having a go. Let's look at the numbers. 13 of you watching on YouTube. Shout out to the YouTube massive. And 46 watching on Twitch. I've always I've wondered for a while whether we should just go one platform and which platform would be best. Now, obviously, if there's more people watching on Twitch, you'd assume Twitch, but I think YouTube is maybe better for streaming. I don't know. I mean, it, I love it how it just automatically puts the videos up there so you guys can watch the replay. I know you could do that on Twitch as well, but unless you're a partner, you only get it for a couple of weeks and stuff like that. And I'm not sure whether I want to do loads of work to get to partner. Right, let's have a look. Um, loads of answers here. This is awesome. Well done, guys. In fact, I missed uh, missed loads. So, Mr. John Polar, it's either good to bad, top or bottom, and condensed is in between. Uh, we've got polarized includes only bad hands and best hands. Condensed lacks these. Uh, Master Chaos says this is a polarized range. Um, which one? Because I can see both polarized and condensed ranges on this screen. Um, polarized range is absolute best or worst. Condensed is medium strength hands. Polar is good and bad. Polarized range is best hands mixed with the worst hands in our range. Uh, polarized has really strong hands and weak, not much middling hands. Raise best and worst. Other is middling hands, good for calling, not so much raising. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we've got, as I mentioned, the hands in sort of salmony color uh, at the top are going to raise call and hands at the bottom are going to raise fold. When you get to a shallow stack depth, this is really how you want to approach pre-flop um, against good players. If you're playing against weak players, I'm going to show you in a minute what happens to this strategy. But against good players, you want to rate, you want to know which in, you know before it happens, you want to know which hands you're going to raise call and which hands you're going to raise fold. And then you've got the hands in the middle, which is a condensed range, which is hands you're just going to jam in the first place. Now you might look at this and you say, yeah, but our opponent knows that we're not jamming any strong hands, so surely they can call wider. Right, that might be something that you think about. 
But the small blind strategy is this, sevens plus ace 10 off, ace nine suited. And the big blind can call fours plus ace eight off, king queen, king jack suited, ace seven suited plus. Even though they know this is, this is what our exact range looks like. Now, if we take a look at some bubble factors here, big blind against the button, only 3%. Uh, small blind against the button, 5.6%. So the small blind's got 25 big blinds. More, It's going to put more of a dent into their stack if they call. Their risk premium is going to be higher. Whereas the big blind, less of a you know less of an issue, but still something to uh, to think about. Now, those are terms that I've used. That's not how the solver's working, right? It's not thinking in those terms. I'm just trying to humanize that for uh, for you. So what are we going to do first? Let's take a look at what happens to our jamming range if we think that the small blind may be, in fact, let's do big blind first. We think the big blind is going to call too tight. Okay, let's go back to the spot, have a quick look. So we think, in fact, it's the same big blind that who raised under the gun. So maybe they're going to call too loose. Um, but let, I just want to I just want to go the other way to you know to give you an idea. So let's say you know they I mean to be honest this is this is pretty reasonable. It is pretty reasonable. I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna leave this. Let's have a look at the small blinds. I think the small blinds pretty reasonable as well. I'm I'm reluctant to to edit any of these. What I think I'm gonna do instead is have a look at the responses to uh, to the opens. Um, so. I'm going to I'm going to adjust some of these. Um did I save this? I'm just wondering why it's got an asterisk here. But let's uh let's just save it and I'm going to load uh, load up the same thing so you guys can see what kind of differences occur. Okay, that's saved. 10 8 suited. This one. Okay. Uh just to highlight this guys that in HRC, you can load a full hand, like a complete hand, or you can just lay, like quickly load a saved hand. And uh, that's why I've done that for, for this one. You don't need to let, load the full hand if we're not going to be editing it. And you can't edit. You can't edit this. Um, you can, well, you can try, but um, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so let's go back here. I don't think, so actually, I don't think the small blind is going to three bet this, like these, these hands. Let's pull this over here. I don't think the the small blinds, you know, this is my read. I don't think the small blind is going to three bet these hands down here. So let's um, let's get rid of them. It might three bet here. I'm not sure they're going to three bet ace, you know, these hands as well. I think, yeah, I think this is more reasonable. Um, so let's uh, let's try that. So let's we got rid of those hands now. Let's have a look at the hands that they are going to jam. Let's say that they're not a studied player and they're not going to be jamming these suited aces. I think the top of this range is reasonable, but I think I'm going to get rid of all of these suited aces here as well. Let's take a look now, just to see if that has any kind of impact at all. So remember, selected subtree, we want to see what we're supposed to min raise on the button. Also, what we might find is that we get to jam more hands or we get to jam fewer hands and min raise them instead if the small blind um, you know, adjusts their strategy. So let's, uh, and remember that we, when we open, we obviously have to fold the bottom of the range to a to a three bet. But if we're not getting three bet as aggressively, this is just from the small blind, big blind stayed the same at the moment. We're going to adjust that in a moment. Then we might get to open more hands, but it will be like more bad hands. But we'll see, because who knows? Uh, so remember to hit reset regret. And uh, let's hit hit this and see what happens. So remember, this is the range of hands that we we were going with to begin with, 13.6% of hands. We'll see if this has any kind of effect. Okay, it's already up to 15.2. What about the jamming? Does that, yeah, so we're jamming a bit less actually now. So some hands on the, on the edge of the jamming range and now we're just gonna go into a min raise range. That's pretty interesting. We'll see how this goes. We're going to see a much bigger change once we start looking at the big blind. But I think this is uh, this is pretty interesting straight away. Whilst this runs, guys, if you haven't done so already, hit the follow button if you're watching on Twitch, and hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. If you want to join my Facebook group, then you can do that. You just have to type command Facebook group into uh, into Twitch, and I will post the link of this in 
YouTube to check out the YouTube chat. Uh, shout out to who's just followed here, P. Millar. I've turned the sounds off, remember, guys. Nice call, Bubs. John Doe. Thanks for the follows, guys. I appreciate that. Down here is my new book. It's out in June. It's being currently, it's being edited by the publishers. I've finished it. I wrote almost 80,000 words for this. Uh, there are well over 100 hands. I think there are 137 hand examples in this book, all from the final table. Lots of different scenarios. So some of them is when you reach the final table, but you're not yet in the money. So there's some bubble stuff in there. Then we've got full final tables. We've got all that you're shorthanded, heads up, how to use software, how to get better at the game. You know, lots of different ideas about uh, you know, what you can do to uh, to improve your training and your study when it comes to final table play. And let's not, yeah, you know, let's not beat around the bush. The final table is where the most money is won and lost. So we want to get good at it. Okay. Uh, and I think that this is a, you know, this session we're doing today is going to be pretty good because a lot of the work in the book is based on equilibrium. Today we're looking at exploits and what happens when our opponents are not doing what they should be doing, it, you know, in, in theory. Um, this, uh, yeah, there was. there's an interesting debate, actually, whilst I, I'll let this carry on. There's an interesting debate in the industry at the moment about whether or not these uh, these solutions are like 50% left, 25% left, bubble, you know, all of these different solutions that are coming out pre-flop, whether or not they're actually any good. And I know that there was a great video done by HRC and GTO Wizard where they looked at the effects and they said that, you know, you should be using the 50% uh, charts, yeah, not that you're using charts, but you know what I mean. You, you know, 50% ranges, 50% of the field ranges, and you will see an increase in your uh, EV. Um, and I know that there are other coaches who really support this. We, I mean, to be honest, we've got 25% and 50% ranges uh, in our range viewer that we use uh, to study, and so we show our uh, members and our students what uh, what well they should be doing at different stages of the tournament you can flick be uh, flick between it and it's just a really really nice tool but then there are some players you know some really really well known high stakes players who are saying that it's it, it's not very good uh, and the reason for that is because you're not playing against the most uh GTO players so let's go back to this to this solution i'm going to basically prove it in, in this uh, example, but this is what we should do if we're playing against a player who is gonna play exactly like this and a big blind who's gonna play exactly like this. If that doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, our ranges are gonna change. I'm literally walking you through the process now I'm gonna show you that. So I think the 25%, 50%, whatever percentage of the field left, it's a good place to start. It's good to understand like what happens but remember, you are not playing against two sickos in the blinds. And I use this uh, I use this hand as an example, right? This is a thirty dollar tournament on GG. Uh, this there's players in the blinds. They could be good, but they're not going to be perfectly like this. And that's why you know we've gone in and we've we've added some of the, edited some of these ranges to be you know a little bit a little bit more realistic. Uh, yeah, so uh, L Lanting or Elanting says, uh, I went from a Ben CB vid about 50% ranges and immediately saw Pad shitting on it in his story. Yeah, so like I think, again, I think the whole reason we use solvers is to understand what things are supposed to look like at equilibrium, develop a really solid strategy based on that, but you've got to know how to deviate. If you're playing against somebody who never check raises unless they have it, why would you play like on let's say like paired boards where you're supposed to do a lot of checking back, why would you ever check back a weak hand against a player who's not punishing your raises enough, uh, your C bets enough, right? It's the same thing pre-flop. This is why I like I find it hard sometimes to to listen to people who are so exploit who then suddenly go, oh, but these are the right pre-flop ranges for pre-flop. Like, how does that make sense? You can't be exploit and then go, but I'm full GTO pre-flop. That makes zero sense, and that is why this. That is why we uh, we're talking about this today. Okay, so you can actually go right. This is what the equilibrium looks like, and this is how you might adjust if you've got a, a good idea about how your your population plays or the players you're playing against. Uh, in that sense, 
Top Top Kicker on YouTube says, you have an automated range viewer. How much does it cost to subscribe to that? You can't subscribe to it. You can access it through, I've got two programs. One's called Train and Play Like the Pros, which then leads into our academy. And so you can get it for free uh, through those programs. So it's one of the tools that we, you know, one of the bonuses that we give all of our students um, to help them really shore up pre-flop. Who did I miss in terms of follows? Myco Poker, thanks for the follow. Felix Fur 29 thanks for the follow. Uh, Abver FNC, thanks for the follow. Uh, Mr. Jam says, where's the pad story about that? Oh, it was uh, quite a long time ago now. Um, but I think that's why, um, why it's quite, this is why it's so important to understand equilibrium, but also let's use logic, all right? We, why do, why can't we open this wide? Why can we open this wide? Well, it's because our opponents are doing, supposed to do this. Well, what if they don't do that? What effect does that have? Now, if you've been following my content for a while, you know I am all about the solver. I'm all about like equilibrium. Love to know what it looks like at equilibrium. In order to win in like sub 109s, there are you can make more money by deviating and it's about how do you find where you know where's the where do we deviate how do we how do we do that all right let's have a look this is finished so i'm not sure there's many much difference in the end let's have a look so this was the original we can raise uh 13.6% and now we can raise 14.6% so the small blind not three betting much hasn't had too much of an effect but the kind of hands that we we erase and we jam. So you can see like a jack nine suited originally was just a min raise fold. But now it's actually making more money or well, it's pretty even, but it wants to jam a bit more frequently. 10 eight suited now is uh, still a min raise most of the time, but it's actually some folding in there, which is kind of weird where it was just raising 100% of the time before. That's interesting. Um, of course, like we didn't even see like how we would then respond to the three bets, but this is what we, you know, what we went for. Um, before we move on from this, because we are gonna, as I said, I think there's gonna be a much bigger switch, a bigger change in the strategy or shift in the strategy. I just want to see, like, okay, we said that our opponent is is only gonna jam these uh, these hands from the from the small blind. How do we respond to that? So you can see. Whoops, I should have uh, should have done it the other way around. We call with nines plus, ace jack suited plus, and ace ten suited a bit of the time. But in our new strategy where we think they're gonna be shoving sl only slightly tighter, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a huge, huge difference. Uh, we can suddenly only call with tens plus ace king. Ace queen suited becomes, you know, indifferent. So that's uh, something to, to think about. Um, I'm gonna discuss this a bit more as we look at now what the big blind is doing. Let's take a look at the, what's going on here. Funny Money says, the irony is I used to have good players marked as fish, then I realized they were just deviating or adjusting. Turns out they were just crushing. Yeah, there's so many hands where I've marked someone as like a donkey because I just didn't understand the situation enough. And I think if you can be humble enough to recognize that and not just think they're a donk for the rest of time, that's how you're going to become a crusher yourself. Didier says, hello, hello. Uh, Master Chaos, population from small blind, 10, 10, pure jamming, I think, 9, 9, 2. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting one. I don't know why we didn't uh, why we didn't pick up on that. We can, uh, yeah, we can, we can look at that in a, in a moment. We're now going to take a look at the big blind, though, because this is where things get fun, I think. So they now have, they only have two options because they close the action. The small blind could have three bet because they've, they're playing 25 bigs effective against the big blind. But we are, um, the big blind's only playing 15, 14, 15 big blinds effective against us. So this is what their range looks like. I think that they will probably defend something like this in terms of call. I don't think they are ever, 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 ever jamming this wide. You guys tell me, what do you think? The hands in purple are the hands that are jamming. So... Let's go back to the example. We're close to the bubble. Do we really think, let's go a little bit smaller on this. How are we gonna do that? Where's the button? This one. Uh, I recognize it's blurry guys, so apologies for that. This is, uh, it was really small when I took a picture and I've blown it up and it doesn't look good. Um, so Wayne Min raised this big blind, who I don't know. 
is he jamming hands like queen three suited? Uh, probably jamming the pairs. I think that's reasonable. Probably jamming some suited stuff in here. Maybe even jamming like offsuit ace x, but offsuit king x as well. Not too sure. Let's have a look. So Master Chaos is no way jamming that wide. Funny when it says no shot, they want to protect their stack for future game. Landy says not on my humble stakes. Okay, shout out to uh, Marco and Didier for the follow. Jim Craft 412 as well. Awesome guys, thanks so much for uh, for being here and for following and supporting the stream. Uh, nice call says interesting chart there. Yeah, so anytime you see like a lot of King X and Queen X going for a jam, there's probably going to be a lot of you know like blocking Queen like Queen X and King X calls. Um, it is pretty interesting though. I guess like the the full frequency calls is this this region in here, right? So it's Queens plus Ace Queen suited and King Queen suited. And because ace king off jams some like 53% of the time to begin with. So that's where yeah, king and queen x blocks a lot of you know, hands here kings, queens, and ace queen, king queen, ace king, and is going to have you know, okay -ish equity. But also, if we go down to here, we see the bottom of this range jamming, right? Well, when we open, we stop opening at like off suit nines and suited sevens. So if you look at this pattern, it starts at around the seven, although it seems like all Queen X just absolutely loves it. But here, like, you can see like the six X, that's where it stops. So remember when we were opening, we were opening some seven, suit sevens and offsuit nines or tens really. So we're very often gonna see a pattern of starting at like eights and sevens uh, in a jamming range. Nice Bob said, the offsuit Broadways and suit Queen X are standing out to me. Yeah, so what we're gonna do, I, I think they will call these hands, they will call this wide. And let me just explain why. Let me look at the bubble factor. Big blind versus button. It's only 3%. So they're not, you know, they cover us and they don't have to be ridiculous, uh, ridiculously tight in this situation. Where they will be tight is when they're covered. So let's say under the gun opens, the big blind now needs to find actually 11.7%. So if I just show you, let me show you in this one. So under the gun opens this range, big blind, um, yeah, suddenly starts folding ace deuce off and king six off, queen eight off, jack eight off, folds some suited hands and also doesn't induce very wide. But that's a you know another story. We are gonna get back into, into this. Okay, so I wonder what kind of impact it's gonna have if we reduce the number of hands that jam here. So if we get rid of some of these, I think this is gonna look a bit better. Maybe something like that. I think this is a little bit more realistic. 20%. Uh, and we can debate this for the rest of time. But they are jamming 26.8. Now they're jamming 20. Let's see what effect that has. So remember, we do the selected subtree. Make sure you start it at the right point so that we want to see what the button's doing in uh, what the button can do. Get your predictions in now as to what effect this is going to have. Does it mean that we jam more? Does it mean that we raise more or raise less or jam less or fold more what you know what do you think guys because if our opponent is suddenly defending with a lot of the hands that they were going to jam does that is that better for us or worse for us how what do you guys think I'm gonna let this run for a bit so you guys uh, you guys don't cheat. This is the original sim. Okay, so Shredder. Oh, it just reminds me of uh, the turtles when it was Shredder. We used to do this thing where I'm gonna do a really bad impression now, but I think it's funny. When you see a Shredder come to the room, who remembers that in uh, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles? Uh, Pizzle the Twizzle says, agree with Shred. So Shredder says, we raise more, jam less, I would assume. Okay, so remember, uh, what I think is really cool is that when you adjust one thing, like an like a response to an open, it's then going to tell you, right, some of these hands now make more money by min-raising rather than jamming. Don't jam them. Put them in a min-raise range instead, and, and then you get to play post-flop against someone who's not going to punish you opening as wide by jamming on you uh, aggressively. Landy says, raise more as we get shoved on less. Good, I like it. We're gonna see in a moment. 
Uh, open wider, maybe have some more rips now if he's not three betting. So yeah, because like so if he's not three betting aggressively enough with like queen do suited, does that mean that we should jam some hands, some you know more value hands because they're going to make more money in that sense? That's a really interesting question. Hopefully we'll get an answer in a moment. Free pass to see a flop. So it's funny money. Interesting, interesting stuff. I hope you I hope you agree. Um, so how are we doing? We're doing all right. We're doing all right for viewers. Shout out to everybody here. If you're really enjoying the stream, guys, then tell your friends and share it on social media. That would be awesome. If you're not enjoying the stream, tell me. Tell me how I could uh, how I could change it. Um, okay, let's take a look. We're almost there. We're at five point six five. Let's take a look. All right, so we can now. Right. Well, let's compare it. <laughs> so before we were min raising thirteen point six, and we're now min raising nineteen percent. And before we were jamming fifteen point nine, and we're now jamming. 18.8 wow so the surprising thing here is that we can jam more so it's not surprising to know that we can raise more because we're not getting punished because they're not jamming three bet jamming enough on us but it's quite interesting to know that jamming suddenly because that there are more hands that we want to jam now as well so let's uh let's let's try and work out on earth what on earth's going on here so look at ace king off ace king off Ace King off loves it because you min raise big blind calls, you get to play a hand in position. But when they get jammed on, you're loving it because you're going to be ahead of a lot of your opponent's jamming range, like all those offsuit King X. Remember that? But now it's pure jam. It's it's absolutely pure jam. So we're we're jamming a little bit more aggressively. Jamming tens, well nines through twos. Let's see what the original was. Yeah, nines through twos. But some min raising with nines and sevens. If we're not getting jammed on as much though. Just rip nines and sevens in the first place. And in fact, it's, it's ripping tens a bit as well. When uh, let's look at let's look at some weaker hands. So the you know the raise folds in this range. We yeah we we're down at sort of the offsuit the bottom of the offsuit broadways and then the suited eights really. Now we get to raise nine x, and we get to raise down all the way down to the seven x the suited sevens. So that's completely different. And we're jamming, we're jamming more hands. We're jamming all these suited nines as well. We're jamming all the suited ace x. Now we're not. So if we're not going to get jammed on as aggressively enough, it's much better to take away the big blinds opportunity to call and, and realize equity post flop. So for us to play a post flop pot, even though we're in position with a strong hand, so we should just, just rip instead. Look, ace queen suited, 100% now. Whereas before, it was a min open. So just completely, completely, completely different. And it's so yeah, I think I think I think most of us, most of you and me, so most of us understand that if they're not three bet jamming enough, we can raise wider. But did you know that you can also jam wider and you should jam wider if you're not getting jammed on as aggressively enough? I think that's a really, really big takeaway. Let's take a look at what happens when we raise and we face a jam. This was the range of hands we're supposed to call off. I think this range is going to get tighter. Well, it has to, right? Because our opponents aren't jamming as wide. Now, we don't have nines and sevens anymore. So they, they're not going to be appear in there because we jam them pre. We also don't have ace, queen, two, days, jack. So we don't have these hands to, to, raise, uh, to raise call, right? Maybe ace, eight suited by it. I think that's, well, we'll see in a moment what that's, uh, what that's going to do. So we don't have ace king off. That was pure jam. So all of these hands are pretty much pure jam. King queen suited is pure jam. So basically, our our range consists of tens plus ace king suited, and that was a pure jam as well, wasn't it? Is that right? I oh, know. So we yeah we do have. So we're gonna we're basically gonna raise call tens plus ace king suited. I can't imagine. Well, maybe we do still call with ace. Well, we'll have a look in a moment. But this is uh, this is some really really sort of powerful stuff I think um, let's have a look here uh, DDR says first time here but looks good appreciate that thanks for being here nice cool bub says nice those are the two hands I was looking at 
Master Chaos, what is the big blind calling range versus the jam? Well, we didn't edit that. So someone's just asked, does he assume he calls tighter versus the jams too? I I don't think, because I, I, I did discuss this right at the start. I don't think this is unreasonable for the hands that he would call in this spot. But I think the bigger exploit that we're looking at is the fact that, there we are. Like these suited queens and offsuit king X and these suited kings, they're just not not jamming. Jack ten off, probably not jamming. So we need to go much much tighter in in that sense. Funny money says makes sense. They can literally call you a jack nine off and have forty percent against a hand like ace king off. Yep. So if we, yeah, when we do raise, they they are going to be defending. You know, very very wide. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, okay. So I think that's uh, I think that's it. So let's have a look now. Yeah, that's exactly what I just said. Tens plus ace king suited. So it becomes, you know, potentially somewhat easier to play. Your strategy would be raise call tens plus ace king suited. You know, you could jam tens as well. You're jamming a lot more hands, but you're jamming a lot of really strong hands as well that that would normally benefit equilibrium from your opponent's three bet jamming on you ag really aggressively. But if they're not doing that, you shouldn't be playing like that. Landing says, okay, so we jam more because you're not getting the EV from our strong hands when they jam lighter. Exactly. Nailed it. Well done. You got it. So this is this is why you cannot do exploits without understanding what the equilibrium looks like first. So anytime anyone ever says to you, oh, I don't bother with Pio, I don't bother with HRC, like no one's playing like that in the stakes that I play. Some of that is true, right? The the second part of that, it's probably true. They're not playing like that. But how are you going to know how you're supposed to exploit them? And some of what you think is a good exploit, because you heard it on a video, is actually really bad. Right? It could actually be really, really bad. The beauty of, of HRC now is that it understands post-flop um, sort of equity realization. It's got a post-flop engine built in, which it didn't have before. And it can actually compare the two EVs. So I'm sure that you could min-raise on this new solution. You could min-raise ace-king. Yeah, look, it's worth $9.22. But jamming makes $10.30. Which of the two do you want to do? It's still going to be profitable to raise call, of course it is, with ace-king off. Yeah, it's still going to be profitable, but it's more profitable to just jam in the first place. I think this has been a pretty eye-opening Hopefully you guys, uh, guys agree. Uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? We might might have to wrap things up there. So what I'm going to say to you is, if you're watching training videos, and let's be honest, I probably put a training video out where I'm like, ah, this is the good exploit, go for it. But unless you've run the Sims yourself and understand what's going on, you perhaps won't be at a point where you know exactly what you know why you're doing what you're doing and why jamming ace king off now is way better than inducing with ace king off so on the whole probably in you know sub 109 mtts we jam wider but make sure we include va more value hands in there and then we induce with a much stronger range uh, Yoshimando says I've got a question what did you do in game did you shove or did you min raise uh, I min raised and I can't remember what happens after that probably got jammed on by queen two suited <laughs> uh, but which would have been fine because that's what the uh, solution uh, said in the first place uh, but great uh, great question appreciate that um, okay cool I think that's going to do it like I said earlier on if you haven't done so already, hit the follow button if you're watching on Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. And what else do I want to tell you about? Join the Facebook group. It's free. You can post questions and hands. You can ask anything you want to do with tournament poker in there. It's a it's a real you know opportunity to get free feedback from 4,500 members and me. There are some some of our team in there as well some of our streamers and our other coaches. So get involved in the free Facebook group. If you want to take things further and join one of my programs, you want to chat about that, just send me a message on Facebook. Just say, hey, Gareth, I want to chat about coaching. 
um, because there are a couple of options. You've got train and play like the pros and you've got the one-on-one -on -one coaching. There's a, I mean, there's not much space for that, but if it's perfect, you know, this is why, this is why we need to chat to make sure that it's right for you. Um, I don't just take anybody on. I've got to make sure that it's, that we're a good fit and you shouldn't want to just take me on because you know, you, you want to make sure it's a right fit for you, but there's limited space on that, but you can get into train and play like the pros. Um, it is, uh, it's my program. If you're looking to take your game up a level this year and you are a recreational or sort of semi-pro and you're working towards being a pro or just want to get, you know, really good and really efficient at studying and identifying leaks and knowing what to work on, then get in touch and find out more about training and play like the pros. Uh, I think you were really going to enjoy it. Uh, Lanting says, glad to have caught that. It's Elliot, by the way. So Elliot's just joined, actually, just joined training and play like the pros. Uh, shout out to you, Elliot. And uh, yeah, we've had quite a few people join already this month, which is uh, which is awesome. So shout out to you guys. As I said, if you want free stuff, come into the Facebook group. Continue to come and watch the the free streams uh, every single Monday. I'm really, uh, really sort of happy to do this for you guys. And if you want to take things further, you want to explore, you know, some paid coaching where you get a community of great members and great coaches around you to support you on your poker journey, then uh, get in touch and I'll uh, point you in the right direction. Shout out to Marco and Lars and Pukatak and Kuman for the follows on Twitch. That's going to do it, guys. Take care. Speak soon. See you next Monday. Bye-bye.